But still, due to his strong desire, his older brother Anton helped him attend high school in Zagreb by sharing his mother's scholarship with him. He unpacked himself sometimes in a soup kitchen, sometimes in an orphanage, and sometimes by giving lessons, because he was an excellent teacher. But already in the sixth grade in school, in 1889, he protested against the Viceroy Kuen Tetervani, who worked on Hungarizing Croatia, and ended up in prison for the first time earlier than that. <laughs> Stefan Radic enrolled in law studies in Zagreb in 1891, a little later than Gandhi in London in 1888. Uh, he delivered his first political speech in 1893, in the same year as Gandhi in South Africa. At the celebration of the 300th anniversary of the Sisak victory over the Turks, he publicly demonstrated again against the Viceroy Tedevari and earned now four months in prison. But in prison, he learned Czech language and then continued his law studies in Prague in 1894. He met there many prominent Czechs, as well as his future wife, Maria Dvorak, the niece of the famous composer Andrew Vigoria. But he also came there in trouble because of his political activity, and he was expelled from the Austrian part of the monarchy. He tried to continue his studies in Budapest, but could not resist in 1895, and participated in a demonstration in the burning of the Hungarian flag on Jelacsi Square in Zagreb, yeah. uh, during the, the visit of the Emperor Franz Josef I, because Christ wanted to show that they are uh, discriminated against under the federalist government. And then, of course, he was sentenced to six months in prison, and now he was banned from studying throughout the monarchy. However, in, the, in prison, he used his time again. This time he learned French. And thereafter, he decided to finish his studies, to enroll in a course at the École Libre des Sciences Politiques in Paris in 1897. He mastered French quickly, very good. In the meantime, he also got married to Maria Dvorak. And living with his wife in Paris, in very poor conditions, often starving, he finished his studies in 1899 with a distinction and received a professor's award of 60 books from the field of political science. And he returned to Croatia in 1900. He joined political life in uh, 1902, first, first as a secretary of the parliamentary club of the United Opposition, and then in 1904, together with his brother Anton and their associates, he founded the Croatian People's Peasant Party. This party achieved still during the times of the Austria-Hungary that the first representatives of peasants took place in the Croatian parliament for the first time. After the First World War, uh, in the Kingdom of Serbs, Croatians, Slovenes, the party, Croatian Peasants Party, gradually became the strongest Croatian party and the second strongest in the entire kingdom. The period of the Radic activity in the Kingdom of Serbs Croatia. So this already coincides with the period of Gandhi's activity in India. It is all the more interesting what Gandhi meant to Radic. In his short forward to Roland's biography of Gandhi, which <coughs> Radic uh, says that Everybody in our people will understand with his mind and even more with his heart 
to God. Those poor Indian peasants suffer the same as we Croatian peasants, and even more so. And that great Indian teacher and organizer of people is the same as the late Ante Radic and the other founders of the Croatian Peasant Party. There are whole pages in this book that correspond to our <coughs> peasant program uh, if, as if they were copies from our journal from the home. And that is why it was right and necessary that this book in the Croatian language has the title Our Journal. 